Good morning. Uh, to clarify, I want to say that I won't be speaking on the wonders of artificial intelligence. But before we go there, uh, let's just start by framing my thoughts. Uh, where do I come from? Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I was attending a talk in this campus. I invited some people over. And in the closing of the talk, this guest speaker said this thing that really blew my mind. He addressed the young crowd of students, which the majority of you guys here. He said, Millennials! People say you've got terrible work ethics, that you guys are spoiled and you don't know what it means to be in the workforce. And millennials, you need to change. You are, you're not right for society. And he held these young people. Forget about what they say. Forget about what they say. Because whether we like it or not, you are the future. And society will have to conform to you, not you to us. And that really blew my mind because as an educator, I spend most of my time trying to teach my students how to be ready for the adult life. And all the while I've been trying to conform my students to today's society. But I've never thought that my students will be their society and I shouldn't get them to conform. Rather, we should be thinking how we can leverage on the transformation of society brought about by the coming generations. So today, that will be the focus of my talk. I will be talking about artificial intelligence riding the wave. That's my title. Artificial intelligence riding the wave. And in this particular talk, I will not be discussing too much of technical issues, but I will be speaking on how artificial intelligence will bring about transformation to society. And if you want to capitalize on this transformation, there are three very simple thought processes I will present to you. Number one, you need to know your target audience, which is not you, it's not your parents, it is the coming generation. What will the coming generation want? Number two, you need to understand technology because technology will be the driving force in changing society in the next decade or so. And number three, if you want to be successful, you then need to make some predictions and some bets. So number three, we will look at what are the possible transformations that will arise. So we start by looking at our target audience because I don't know what the future generation will be like. My first point of reference will be to look at the millennial generation. People born between the 1980s to the 2000s. I fall in this particular category. And research, Pew Research, uh, Goldman Sachs, they say that the millennials are people who are very digital, digital natives. Millennials are people who are very well connected socially, technologically. I think these are very, very obvious things and you really need to add. Yeah, of course, we all know that. Millennials are people who have less spending power than the previous generation. Now, this may be a little bit strange. How come? Millennials are people who are encumbered by debt, recession, student loans. And millennials are people with very, very different priorities from the previous generation. When you look at the combination of the first four factors, this drives the different priorities. I no longer seek, for example, not, I would speak for myself, but if I were a millennial, let me generalize. I no longer seek material security, but rather I prefer to seek experiences. Why? Because the connected world has opened up my mind to see that the world is so much bigger than my backyard. There is so much more I can do. The, the connected world has shown me that life is not just about building up my little empire, but life is about contributing to society. And that's why millennials, the way millennials think are a little bit different. Right? And we then ask ourselves, if millennials think like this, what about the next generation? What characteristics of the millennials will carry on to the next generation, which we call the generation Z? Will they be just as connected as us? 
or even more connected? Will they be just as social as us, willing to share, caring about society? Or will there be a dramatic shift? Perhaps, perhaps wood, no wood. <laughs> An outbreak of World War III, completely transforming society. Now, there's a lot we do not know. But if you were to think positively, we can assume some things. <coughs> Technology will continue to grow. People will continue to be more and more connected daily in every part of their lives. And this will change the future generation to be people who are even more willing to share, even more willing to be a contribution to society. It will also change their demands, their priorities. I no longer need to possess vast amounts of material. Rather, I can learn to collaborate with people. And that will be the future generation. The question is, can you produce a product or a service that the millennials will want? Uh, sorry, that the next generation, Generation Z, will want. So the first point, your target audience. Do you know your target audience? My second point is technology. Do you understand the technology that will transform society in the next decade? And that is artificial intelligence. Companies like Google, Microsoft have boldly proclaimed today that their company's focus is AI first, which means all their resources that they make, they will allocate as much as they can to artificial intelligence before they do anything else. And this is coming from a company like Microsoft, whose money makers has always been an operating system or Microsoft Office. They have decided these things are no longer our priority. Artificial intelligence first, number one. Now why? To help you to understand or to bring uh, the power of AI down to layman's term, we compare artificial intelligence to us, humans. And the first thing we recognize is AIs have vastly superior perception capabilities. What I can see is limited to the human spectrum. What an AI can see is beyond. What I can hear is limited to sonic frequencies. I kept out that 20,000 hertz, for example. An artificial intelligent program can listen to subsonic, ultrasonic frequencies, sonic frequencies, and identify patterns that we cannot see. More than that, artificial intelligence today has access to practically unlimited processing power and unlimited memory. Now this comes for two reasons. Number one, technology. Processes are getting faster. Memory is getting cheaper. But the transformative technology is the second one. Broadband, mobile, internet. Today, you don't need to create a super powerful machine that you can carry around. Because every little device you keep in your pocket has access to supercomputer cloud performance through the internet. When you use a program like Siri and you ask it to, you dictate something to it, ask it to put something in your notes, this program is then sending telemetry over to the servers, processing what you're speaking, converting into text, understanding what you're saying, and putting down your next calendar entry for you. And this is only done because of the power of the internet, and this will continue to grow. We also know that artificial intelligence today, besides being completely connected by the internet, besides being uh, unlimited in processing power and memory, that AI today is relentless, tireless. It can go on and on. It does not need to rest. It does not need to eat. You can take an hour to read a book, and AI can read a million books at the same time. It has got no problem with that. And that's why AI will be the transformative technology. And if you understand the technology, you will then begin to understand the changes it can bring to society. And when you understand the changes it will bring to society, that's where we can explore some of the transformations. Now today's theme is the multiverse. It is impossible for me to predict everything and anything that artificial intelligence will bring. But I will explore only three possibilities. And I hope with these three possibilities, 
It will open up your mind to really think, how will society change and be transformed by artificial intelligence? The first thing I will explore is this concept of universal basic income. Now, how many of you have heard of this concept? One, two, a handful. Right? The concept of universal basic income is real simple. Everyone in a country, whether you deserve it or you don't deserve it, everyone, whether you're a resident or a citizen, will receive an unconditional fixed amount of salary. Unconditional. Are you working? You get it. Are you not working? You get it. Are you sick? You still get it. You're healthy and you're a billionaire. You still get this unconditional salary. It's not a new idea. But today, the idea of universal basic income is suddenly very, very relevant. People like Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook, people like uh, Elon Musk from Tesla are championing this idea. Countries like Switzerland have actually brought it into a referendum to vote whether we should have universal basic income. Now, why is this so important? Because artificial intelligence is poised to take the jobs of the people. You may not realize it, but up to 80% of blue-collar jobs will be replaced by AI. And you may think the white-collar fellows, oh, we are safe. No. Why would I need an accountant or an auditor if I can get an AI program to do it all for me? Why would I need an optician if an artificial intelligence program on my phone can scan my eyes and tell me exactly what diopter I need? Why would I need that? And if you really think about it, many, many industries will be affected by artificial intelligence. And these people who are discussing UBI or universal basic income say that this will bring about a huge, wide gap of wealth. And there needs to be a way to solve this problem. Now my question to you is this. If this does become a solution, universal basic income. So you imagine now, everyone in the coming generation gets a fixed salary, whether they like it or not. Whether they want it, need it or not. Everybody gets a fixed salary. The question is, what will the next generation do with this money. So I did a thought experiment. I asked some of my friends, what will you do if you got a fixed income, 4,000 ringgit a month? 4,000. Just not too high, not too low. 4,000 ringgit a month. You don't have to do anything. You get this. What would you do? Some people tell me, I would be a water sports enthusiast. Some people tell me, I will be a soup kitchen operator. Some people tell me, I will continue to work because I enjoy work. Now, my, when I've gone through this thought process and I begin to ask these questions, the thing that I really wonder is, what will the next generation do with this money? Because many people say when you give a free salary to everybody, people will be lazy, they won't work, they will stay at home and watch TV. But that may not be true. Giving you that fixed salary gives you the liberty to go into business, to be an entrepreneur. And you don't have to worry because there's always that fallback coming and what new businesses will arise. I think that's a very important question. Furthermore, people will be willing to share. We look at the future generation just now, the target audience. They may be more willing to share. They may be more willing to contribute to society. What will they do with the money? That is something for you to think about. And if you can, I think, identify a particular niche, a particular market that you can meet, you would have already thought of a business that you can run in the 23rd century. Sorry. <laughs> the next transformation I will bring about, uh, or I will discuss that artificial intelligence may bring about, is the idea of the reimagination of space. Now to bring this down to something that's very easy to understand, we look at the hottest field of AI today. 
autonomous vehicles, self-driving cars. Now, self-driving cars sound like a really nice convenience. My car can drive on its own. That's great. But I wonder if you really, really consider the ramifications of self-driving cars. Number one, if your car can drive by itself, why do you need a parking lot? Number two, if your car can drive by itself, why do you need a car? You don't need a car anymore. Why purchase a material object when you can just use it as a service? Today, the closest service we have is Uber. You need a car, punch in your phone, exactly when it tells you the car will arrive, take you to the destination, drop you off. But it still requires a human driver. Therefore, the cost is still high. But when the car is fully autonomous, traffic problems are solved. Your car can arrive faster, leave faster, go to the next passenger faster. You don't need drivers. It will be cheaper. It totally doesn't make sense to own a car. Now, how will this transform space? Powers of offices today have floors and floors of parking lots. What will they be used for? All the open parking lots we have in KL, Chow Kid, or wherever you go, what will it be used for? And not only that, the roads themselves. Will we still need all our multi-lane highways when people are sharing their vehicles? And not only sharing, but because the vehicles are controlled by AI, there is no congestion, which means the roads will clear faster. What do we use? What do we do with all this space? And we go further. Today, we drive above the soil on the surface of the road because as a driver, we need light, we want to see. But with artificial intelligence, it may make even more sense to just go underground. And that's what Elon Musk is doing today. Why do you need cars on the road? Park them somewhere safe, contained, where it has no chance to hit any pedestrians. Then the question becomes, what happens to all the roads? What happens to all this space? And in the beginning, I mentioned that we want to talk about AI today and riding the wave. So if you can think of something that you can do with that space, and today I'm just talking about cars, AI will transform a lot more space. Yeah? I'm just talking about cars, roads, and parking lots. There will be a transformation of space. I look at the condo I stay in, four floors of parking. I can't build houses there. I can't convert it into a factory. What will that condo's parking lot be 10 to 20 years in the future when there are no cars there? What will happen? And if you can think of an application, you will have a business for the 23rd century. Ah, I keep going next. Now the last point, I've got two minutes left. The last point I want to touch on is the paradigm shift in the idea of consumerism and material possessions. Right. Today, the sharing economy is growing. Sharing of cars, sharing of rooms and houses, Airbnb, uh, Uber. But in the future, we foresee that the sharing economy will share even more things. Let's imagine companies like Amazon now are working on delivery drones. Drones that can get you a product from a central hive in the city to your house in 15 minutes or less. Now my question is this, if a product can arrive at my doorstep in 15 minutes or less, why do I need to own that product? Let's take for example, last week I drilled two holes in the wall to mount a clothes hanger. I've never used my drill before. For two years, I have a drill in my house, I've never used it. And then last week, I used it for 15 minutes. <laughs> it's completely silly for us to possess, own a device like a power drill in your house. It's completely silly to own your own giant barbecue grill if you only use it once or twice a year. And what other products 
today that people regularly buy and own. Let's take for example the most fancy, beautiful handbag you've seen for the girls. How often do you use it? Now I can create a service that allows you to rent out the products that you have. You put up your handbag and say, oh, this is my handbag, you can rent it for $15 an hour. If someone is interested, they punch it in. I want this handbag this day, this time. A drone goes, flies to your home, picks it up, flies it over to the other person's place, they take it for a dinner, bring it back, the drone sends it back to your house. How is this going to transform e-commerce when people no longer place a premium on ownership? I don't need to own it. I just want to experience it. I just want to use it. And I mentioned just now, in the coming generation, we foresee a change in priorities. No longer will I want to own my own car. It doesn't make sense anymore. Now, this, you may be fighting this idea. No, 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 I need my own car. I want to go where I want to go, whenever I want to go. Forget about it. Because society will change because of artificial intelligence. Now, my time's up. I hope today I've opened up your mind to really think, imagine, and wonder what are the possibilities in the multiverse brought about by artificial intelligence. Thank you very much. Thank you.